Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about the seed, different types of seeds. So, we have known, we have known, we have discussed that the seeds, they can be of two different types. The monocotyledon seeds and the dicotyledon seeds. The monocot or the monocotyledon seed, they have got a single cotyledon, whereas compared to that, the dicot seeds, they have got two cotyledons. In this video, we are going to talk about the dicot seed structure. Let's look into a dicot seed. The typical surface of a dicot seed is made up of the seed coat. Now, this seed coat is again made up of two layers. The outermost layer is known as the testa, whereas the layer inner to the testa is known as tegmen. So, testa and tegmen, these two layers make up the seed coat. There is a presence of a scar on the seeds. So you can see this is a typical gram seed. It has got a scar. This scar is known as the hilum, right? So this hilum, this is actually a point where a developing seed remains attached to the fruit. So this is a point known as hilum. Now, there is a presence of a small pore just above the surface of the hilum. This is known as the micropyle. Now, what is the function of micropyle? This is a pore. Now, this uh, we know the seeds develop from the ovule. Now this pore in the ovule or the micropyle, this is the area from where the pollen tube enters into the ovule. Now the pollen tube will enter into the ovule and it will, it will give the male gametes or it will disperse the male gametes into the ovule for the process of fertilization. So micropyle plays an important role in the entry of the pollen tube due to which the male gametes can enter into the ovule. The presence of two cotyledons which are fleshy. Now a typical dicot seed, they have got different structures. What are those? It contains an embryo, it contains the embryonal axis and it contains the two, dico two cotyledons since they are dicots. Now these two cotyledons we are talking about, they are mostly fleshy in case of dicots and they contain reserve food materials. Now the embryonal axis we are talking about, this actually has two parts. The, uh, the part known as plimule, it later on develops into the, uh, the shoot right, or the stem which bears the fruit, flowers, leaf etc. Whereas the other part known as the radical of the embryonal axis, it transforms into the roots. So these are the two parts of the embryonal axis, the plimule and the radical. So the presence of plimule and radical in this dicot seeds. Now there is a formation of endosperm in the seeds. For example, in case of the castor seeds, this is due to the process known as double fertilization. We are going to talk about this double fertilization in our later chapters. So because of the formation of double fertilization or the process of double fertilization, it results in the formation of a structure, a part known as endosperm. These endosperm, they are nothing but they contain reserve food materials inside the seeds. Now gram and bean, these are the types of seeds which do not show the presence of endosperm. Hence, these type of seeds are known as non-endospermous seeds. So in this video, we have talked about the typical structure of a dicot seed. I hope you have understood and liked this video. Thank you.